10 non-challenging behaviors displayed by those we support. This could be those who have learning disabilities. By that, I mean they've got autism or Down syndrome, or those who have dementia, Alzheimer's, or mental health conditions. Now, in my previous video, I talked about the triggers that could bring on these dis challenging behaviors. Okay, and I did say that it could be things you did or forgot to do. It could be factors in the environment bringing about it. It could be things that just popped out of the blues from nowhere. You had no inkling about them. Okay, but either way, these can bring on challenging behaviors from those we support. Now, number one on that list will be um, aggression. They could be physically aggressive towards you, as in lashing out at you, hitting you, spitting at you. You know, they could be abusive as well, calling you names and all sorts. Now, if that is the case, please don't ever sweep it under the carpet. Always ensure that you send, write it in an email rather to your line manager, stating what is going on. Don't put yourself at risk for no reason, if that makes any sense. What are the other nine? Hey, 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 my name is Kesiana Akwara Atie, a health and social care trainer. To all of you, my old and new returning subscribers, oh my good God, I cannot say thank you enough. Thank you for being there. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for understanding, uh, you know, my inconsistencies these days. I am so appreciative. Thank you so much. And hey, hey, if you are just watching this channel for the first time or you came across it per chance, hello there. On this channel, I talk about everything care, all right? And you do what to do what smash the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up by liking the video and don't forget to click on the notification bell. So whenever I upload a new video, you, my dear, will be among the very first to know. All right. Freely connect with me on Instagram, Care by Kes, TikTok, Caring Kes. And of course, follow me on Facebook as well, Kesiena Aquara. And now I'll see you there. Okay. So let's get back to it. But before we do, let me make this sincere apologies to every single one of you. I do apologize for not being very consistent. I've been having work commitments, family commitments, and me time commitments as well. I'm trying to balance it all. What I'm, I'm hoping rather that in the coming year I should have balanced everything out. So a thousand apologies once again. Okay. Now, number two um, point or, or behavior that could be displayed is what? Um, Self-harming. And by that, I mean that they will bang their heads on the wall pull out their hair, bite their lip or their cheek, their inner cheek, which will cause bleeding. Now, what I've got to realize is that the more you tell them to stop, the more they carry on. So you need to understand who you are working with and what to do to prevent them from getting to that point. Because I believe in preventive measures, not curative measures. Okay. Now, number three, sexually inappropriate behavior, where they touch themselves, fondle their genitals, or they undress in public, or they want to touch somebody else inappropriately. I've put it a situation whereby one of the people I was supporting was, you know, they were sitting in the lounge and his hands just went straight down there. And we had to say, please, could you take your hands off? Why? Because the other three females who were sitting there, they were looking at each other, looking at us and looking at him. And we said, okay, if you want to do that, we're not saying don't do it. Can you go upstairs, please? And because he didn't want to go, so what did he do? He took his hands off. off. We said, could you please wash your hands? He said, no. So what did you do? We gave him uh, antibacterial wipes to you know, clean his hands with. That was case solved. Okay. And then the fourth thing is that they are quite destructive. Yes. They could punch holes in the walls, kick, break things, and all of that. Fifthly, they're also disruptive. So they disrupt everything going on. If somebody, let's say, some of the services are watching TV in the land, what would they do? Somebody could just pop up and then turn the television or throw something. That's disrupting the peace and quiet of the whole. Okay. Sixthly, you have what they call pika, where they're eating things that are not fit for human consumption. Like what? Like paints, sand, leaves, toilet rolls, carpets, or they are drinking things that are not fit for human consumption. Like bleach, um, sanitizers, washing up liquid, anything liquidy. Now, you might say how that is possible. It is very possible. I've worked in a home whereby there was a, an individual, I think there were like eight of them in the home. There was an individual who would drink anything on site. Okay? And so what did they do? Every single thing in the house was locked up. Anything that had liquid was locked up. And so when you come into the house, your first thing is that you're given a bunch of keys to open each, each um, cupboard or whatever. Now, the keys are not labeled. Possibly the guy could read them. And so they were not labeled. 
And then you have to try an error, try an error to open what you want to open and take what you want. Why? Because they don't want safeguarding issues. Because if anything should go wrong, oh my God, the paperwork will be crazy. Safeguarding, oh my gosh, it will be terrible. And you understand that they don't want such, you know, stress on themselves. And I don't blame them. I went there once and I never went back. <laughs> that makes any sense. All right. Now the next one to talk about is restlessness. They can be restless. That's a way of showing that they are getting there. This is a challenging behavior. And when you see that, all know what to do. But like I always tell people, don't let them get to that point where they are restless, they are pacing up and down, fidgeting. No, don't let them get to that point. Okay? One point is that they could be asking the same question repeatedly or doing the same activity repeatedly. Number eight is what they call fickle smearing. You heard me right. So that means that they will do a number two either on the floor in their room or wherever, dip their hands in it and use it to redesign their walls, if that makes sense. Now, it is not a very nice thing to come to work and be having to clean all of that all the time. I had a colleague who was faced with that kind of situation. Initially, they were not the ones cleaning. They had people coming to clean it. But it got to a point, those who were coming in to clean got tired of cleaning. And they would now ask the staff to start cleaning the pool. Of course, nobody wanted to do that. It got to a point, people were now leaving, resigning. And so they had to relocate, you know, the individual to another place where they could handle that. All right. And lastly, they have what they call nighttime waking or sleep disturbance. So basically when others are going to bed, they go, but stay a few hours, they come back down, they, want to, they don't want to sleep anymore. Now, it's not very nice, particularly for who is on night shift and for the uh, service user as well. Why? Because the next day, or should I say the, fall, the morning of the next day, they're very cranky. They're not able to function as they should function. Is it any fault of theirs? It isn't really. Okay, but uh, whatever you do, try not to let, them, let that happen. Again, I was in a similar situation. I had this gentleman who would wake up, he goes to bed, say like nine. By 12, one is up and he stays all throughout the night, the early hours of the morning to the next day. And of course, the 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 um so the key workers working with him were like, oh, what happened? And I'm like, oh, he didn't sleep. And they're like, oh no, don't let don't let that happen again. Because the whole day he was just not himself. And so I asked, what do I do, you know, to make him go back to bed? They're like, switch the television, switch up the lights. So whenever I was there, I would switch up the lights, you know. And if, for, for instance, I'm watching TV because there's nothing else to do. And he comes, I hear him coming out from his room. I switch, on the TV, I switch it off. So he comes, he sits down, and, and he goes back to sleep. Okay? But the most important thing here is that let those who we support know that we genuinely care. Professionally, we genuinely care. And I think that will go a long way to helping us understand, or better still, that will go a long way to reducing the challenge behaviors they, they display. Because I come to realize that when we show them that we care, that we're there for them, and we indulge them sometimes, these challenging behaviors will be not something that occur frequently, but something that occurs once in a while. If that makes any sense. Now, I'm going to be uploading a video um, that will tell us how to manage them. Okay, what to do to reduce these challenging behaviors. And if you know you'd like to see that video, comment, leave your comment in the comment section and I'll, I'll be sure this time to upload it earlier. Until I see you in my next video, guys, always remember this, never you forget, that no matter what the matter is, you, you matter so much more. Au revoir.